Hey, I'm Clint Dempsey, and you're watching This Week in MLS. It makes me feel good that Clint Dempsey is, is giving the show a shout out, you know? Yeah. It's a good way to start the week. It's a good, good solid Monday. Great way. Don't you think? Yeah. Um, guys, I'm so excited. We've got Heath Pierce with us once again, filling in for Kalen. Thank you so much for doing Thanks this. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. You killed it last week. Did I? So much so that we decided to have you back. Perfect. And. Don't tell Kalen, but you can come back anytime. We'll make room for you. Thank you. This little table. I appreciate that. How do you that. feel about that? I feel good about that. Awesome. I mean, why not? Why not, right? We're having fun. Um, well, let's get to it. Lots to talk about, right? And we are going to start in the Pacific Northwest, where Seattle, a huge win against their Cascadia rivals. They beat the Portland Timbers 3 to one and don't look now guys Seattle is now only two points behind the Timbers and with another matchup between these two teams next week that's right it's Heineken rivalry week um, Seattle could find themselves above the red line and Heath we can talk about the Ladero effect right since he has joined um, they have picked up 10 of a possible 12 points and it just seems to have re-energized this side you see it in Jordan Morris you see it in Dempsey what's been the biggest difference for you I think that really is the Lodero effect. He came into a club that was under pressure. They felt that stress, but he's a guy arriving new. He's not gonna feel that pressure. He's just out there playing, and that's making the players better around him, as well as a coaching change usually brings a little bit of life to the club, so the combination of the two, I think, is a positive impact on the club. Let's talk about the coaching change. What have you seen tactically that's different for Seattle? I just see players playing with more confidence and freedom. I think sometimes they overanalyze when things aren't going well. The players start to get within their own heads, but it seems like now they're having fun and they're enjoying it. You're seeing Clint Dempsey play very well at the moment. I think that's having an impact on everybody. I mean, it could come down to these two teams kind of vying for that final final playoff spot. How exciting, how exciting would that be to watch? I think it'd be great. Yeah. I haven't been to a game out there in the Northwest yet, but I think if you could have Seattle and Portland battling for oh. that final playoff spot, one of them is gonna actually go on to do well, mm -hmm. I think. It's juicy, it's getting juicy. All right, um, well, it has not been <laughs> the best year for Chicago, to say the least, but they had reason to celebrate on Saturday for the first time since July 12, 2014. They pick up a win on the road and they did it in a big way, defeating Montreal 3-0. Um, now, obviously, the Fire don't pick up those three points without scoring some goals, and there were some pretty ones in this game. Uh, but we've got to talk about Sean Johnson, the goalkeeper. Five saves um, on the night for him, and I was in Chicago a couple weeks ago. The fans just love this guy. They are really, really behind him, and he's been playing really well for Chicago Heat. He's been great. Obviously, he started the season on the bench, and to be able to go through that process of having to work your way back in the starting lineup, prove yourself, is now paying dividends for him, and I think it's going to be a great step forward in his career. All right. That, just just bear with me here, bear with me here. Chicago's still at the bottom of the table right now, but but they are only six points off of uh, that, that sixth spot. Could, could they make a playoff push? Could they do it, Heath? They certainly could, if that's the question <laughs> that you're really asking, but it starts with a win this next weekend against the LA Galaxy and also taking points from DC United. They need to create some sort of po positive streak and it starts now. If they can't do that, then it's gonna be be all over for Keeping them, the yeah. dream alive. Keeping the dream alive for Chicago. All right, well, let's keep it in the Eastern Conference where things at the top remain the same, both NYCFC and Toronto picking up wins. Um, and let's start with Toronto, uh, probably the hottest team in the league right now. Joe Vinko can't stop scoring goals. He gets another one, really, really pretty. Um, but the big news for them, they've got Josie Altador back. And just watching him play, you, when he's not on the field, you almost forget what a presence he has. What does he bring to that side? When Josie's not contributing in goals and assists, he does so much of that dirty work you don't see. He holds the ball up well, he scraps well, he takes some of that attention away from Giovinco that allows Giovinco to now find pockets and do what he does best. Um, all right, so I mentioned NYCFC before. They got the 1-0 win over the Galaxy, not without a little bit of controversy. Um, Dabagia might have might have been offside, I'm just saying. Um, but when you look at Toronto and NYCFC, the two teams that are at the top right now, ultimately, Heath, who do you see the one coming out on top uh, when all is said and done? It's so tough to say. Obviously, we talked about NYCFC's defense needing to tighten up last week. I think that they did that. They got a shutout this weekend. And But you have a team in Toronto FC that's now going back to full fitness. And I think they've been good on the road and at home this year, so I think TFC kind of has that edge and that advantage, and I'd like to see them finish on top. 
get good, it's gonna get good. All right, we're gonna get back to all that action in just a minute, but right now, I wanna talk about expansion, and we're gonna take it out to St. Paul, Minnesota, um, where it was announced that Minnesota United FC would be officially joining MLS next year. So now we've got Minnesota and Atlanta joining the league. Um, we've got LAFC, they are breaking ground on their new stadium this week. Heath, what does expansion mean for the league? It's excitement. Yeah. Out, outside of in increasing the, the ability for players to have places to play, we're actually becoming more of a national league. We're having teams put in different pockets around the country. But these teams are also setting the bar and setting the standard so high. You have Atlanta that now has, t I think, 22,000 season tickets sold already. You have Minnesota, who has such a passionate and big fan base set up already. LAFC breaking ground on a new stadium that's going to be a really, really cool place mm -hmm. to enjoy a game. So I think all of those aspects just make this league so much more exciting. Super exciting stuff. And guys, if you miss any of that Minnesota announcement or you want to keep up with the developments with LAFC, just stay tuned to MLSsoccer.com. We have got you covered. All right, well now we are going to take it back uh, to the action and we're gonna take it out west. There were a couple of games that would impact both the east and the west. The first one of those is RSL defeating Dallas. And this is a huge, huge win for them, Heath. Yeah, not only is it a huge win for RSL, they picked up the three points, but they also jumped over the LA Galaxy in the standings, which is a huge moment for them this season. All right, and then the team right below Dallas, the Rapids, um, they remain unbeaten at home this year, but they've had that hot, hot start. They have now, though, only settled for six points in their last nine games. Is there any sort of cause for concern there? I don't think so. I think <laughs> I, I think that when you look at draws, you, they can go either way. You could drop all those points, but they've only lost three times this season, which is an indicator of how much they're able to stay in games. And I think that's that's a positive thing. It's not a negative thing. It's easy to say, hey, yeah, but look at all the points you would have if you got three points in all these. You could also say, yeah, but you could lose all those points. So I think the fact that they're staying in games, whether giving up goals late or they're scoring goals late, I think it's a positive sign. So I think they should do nothing to change where they're at right now. All right, status quo. Heat, time for one of my favorite segments. Uh, did you see that? We love this. This is when we pick out our favorite plays uh, from the weekend. And as the guest, once again, I'm going to let you go first. All right. Well, ahead. my did you see that moment is Giovinco, ball to him over the top, brings it down with his right foot, great first touch in front of him, gets it onto his left foot, buries it off the post, and in. That whole play from start to finish was, was all him. Uh -huh. You know, his first touch setting him on the run, setting himself up on his second touch, and then when he, when he finished it on his left foot, it hits off the post and just kind of glides it along did. that goal line and into the, <laughs> into the net, and that to me is phew, Yeah, there was no magic. way he was going to miss that. Yeah. It was spectacular. I totally agree with you on that one. All right, mine, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Chicago. I'm going to keep up the Chicago love right now. Louis Solignac's goal was absolutely beautiful. Uh, David Akam had a really nice ball for him, and the way that Solignac just kind of was able to cut inside a couple times and just that, that beautiful finish um, it was really, really nice, and that's, you know, something that has been missing that that attack for Chicago and I was I was very very happy to see that it was his first, his first first goal for the fire too it's a good shot it's a great it's a great first goal listen heck of a first goal um, all right so now we are going to um, take some Facebook questions we did a little Facebook live uh, pre-production meeting and you guys were great and watched and gave us some questions and Rachel Steele wants to know big crew fan do the crew have a shot at getting back to the MLS Cup final for a shot at redemption? What do we think? <laughs> well, I don't think they're going to get back to the final again. But we have seen some signs of life the last two weeks. We have seen more contribution from Merrim, from Finley. Mm -hmm. Iguain is back in the fold, and he's scored a goal this weekend and is doing well. So I think there is a little bit of life to them, but I think an MLS Cup final appearance is unrealistic. Unrealistic. Uh, but guys, thank you so much for watching. And Heath, once again, thank you so much for for pinch hitting again this Thanks week. Guys, stay tuned to MLSsoccer.com for all your updates and we will see you next week.